Bengaluru is often called the city of lakes. Around 30 kilometers from the city center lies Hesarghatta. The Hesarghatta lake is spread over 1000 acres and it is the largest lake in Bengaluru. Surrounded by trees, the area is home to several bird species and it makes the perfect getaway from the city. But our drone visual threw up some unusual activity in this picture-perfect setting. Look closely at where the trees are growing. What are these trees doing in the middle of a lake bed? Today, the lake faces a surprising new challenge to its existence. Trees. Hesargatta Lake is a man-made lake. It was built in 1894 by Sir K. Sheshadri Ayer, the Diwan of Mysore to meet the water needs of Bengaluru city. It served as Bengaluru's only water source for over a century, well into the 90s when rapid urbanization and resulting encroachment began to threaten its existence. The Karnataka Forest Department started planting trees on the periphery of the lake to form a natural barrier that would prevent encroachment. But soon, this happened. Forest Department started planting trees in the middle of the lake bed. They were following a suggestion from a 1986 Lakshman Rao report titled Report of the Expert Committee for Preservation and Restoration of Existing Tanks in the Bangalore Metropolitan Area. The report suggested converting dried up lake beds into tree parks to prevent encroachments. When the Forest Department began the plantation, they selected Prosopis julifora commonly known as Jali Mara in Kannada and Acacia nilotica. Neither of these are natural to South India and both are widely acknowledged to be the most invasive species of trees. These species quickly adapted and today these trees have spread over a considerable area of the lake. Way back in 1970 I used to come and work here this lake used to provide good fish catch. Trucks loads of fishes were caught. They were transported to Bangalore for sale. There used to be sailing here activity. There used to be water sports activity and a lot of recreational activities. Many people used to come and relax here, see the beautiful surroundings and the water spread area and other things. And this lake used to provide water to the Bangalore and uh, then uh, uh, Malayshuram area and other areas, the surrounding areas used to receive water from this lake. But today the picture is different. I mean, to me, I'm coming here after a long gap. I feel sorry to see such a large volume of trees around and inside the lake. And I've never seen this. We were looking at water on the lake beds with the help of satellite imagery. And we saw some patches um, in the images on the lake beds. So we were wondering what are these patches because we had observed, um, we had got unprecedented rainfall in 122 years and that should have filled up all the lakes with brimming water. Uh, but just after five months of the rainfall, there were patches on these lake beds which got us curious on what are these. And upon observing the Google Earth, extensively we found out that these are trees which are present on the lake bed and not in the periphery. Nirmala Gowda and Kushbu Birawat are researchers from Pani.Earth, a Bengaluru-based not-for-profit organization that works on river and lake ecosystems. They are currently studying the impact of trees on the lake bed. So we went on field, we checked out um, Hesargatta Lake, we did a drone imagery and that's when we got to know that these are trees present in vast expanse on the Hesargatta Lake. Then we went to the nearby lakes and the story repeated and that is when we realized this is a huge concern 
having trees on the lake beds. Rainfall pattern of 50 years are taken to design the area and to demarcate the full water level. And any planting has to be done only beyond the full water level. Any planting within the lake bed, within the full water, uh, full reservoir level, is a mistake. The, the principle is, if the water stands in the bed for more than two months, then we don't plant up such, such areas. Such patches are not taken up for plantation. The areas which remain under water for two months, we plant up. The areas which remain permanently underwater or maybe for even four or five months underwater, the principle is it is not to be planted. If any forest officer has planted up those areas, it is a mistake. Uh, but then the question arises, as we saw from the satellite, the trees were not only in the periphery, they were in the center also. And encroachment was actually happening from the periphery. So, um, um, if it was one or two lakes here and there, scattered trees, and if it was just the periphery, that was not an issue. Um, it started becoming a big concern when most of the lakes had trees instead of water in 2022. Nirmala and other researchers at Pani.Earth have mapped the extent of tree population in all the lake beds in Bengaluru urban and four nearby districts. They used images from Google Earth Landsat satellites and Karnataka government's Dishank app. They made a combined map of all the lakes in their study. The results were shocking. So uh, upon re using the satellite data and doing our analysis further, we found that almost 49% of the lakes which are present in Bangalore urban district are covered with trees and shrubs. Similar trend follows in Bangalore rural, uh, Tumkur district, Kola district, Chikmalapur district, and it's a huge cause of concern. But how do these trees affect the lakes? To know more, we tag along with the Pani.Earth team. Our first stop was Palanajogi Halli Lake in Doddabalapur. Swami has been fishing at the Palanajogi Halli Lake for over four decades, as did his elders before him. He told us he is witness to the dwindling fish population in this lake. When the gira achkirra na vade va kutkona alva, anta gira allayu, dangerous gira. ಈ these are not the trees which are meant for aquatic region. There are trees which are capable of withstanding the water in those. And these may form a sort of a bush-like growth. And that may not be the best thing to happen for uh, uh, aquatic animals. Because number one, it reduces the penetration of sunlight. And as a result, there is less oxygen production. So you may say that trees are uh, producing oxygen. Yes, but they are not dissolving in water to the extent of what the aquatic plants produce, phytoplankton and uh, aquatic uh, plants produce in water. That's the one. So all that will happen and ultimately you see a reduction in the amount of fish that one used to harvest earlier than what it is today. 
quality of water also decreases because there is fallen litter in terms of leaves and that will deteriorate and then add higher organic matter. When you add higher organic matter, phosphorus, carbon, nitrogen, that will increase. And uh, that is, they produce result in what you call it as a plankton bloom. And plankton bloom results in deficiency in oxygen. So these are all chain events that takes place. That is the beginning of the end of the lake, I would say. Our next stop was at the Tigala Chaudena Halli Lake in Anekal Taluk. This is one of the worst affected lake beds. More than 57% of the lake area is covered with trees and shrubs. Recently, the Yamare Gram Panchayat in Anekal wrote to the Forest Department requesting removal of Prosopis julifora and Acacia nilotica from this lake bed. They cited significant reductions in groundwater levels and surface water storage, leading to drinking water shortages in the Panchayat. Desiltation of the lake has also been stalled because of these trees. ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ <laughs> We asked ourselves when doing the study saying what if these trees continue to be on the lake bed? What would be uh, the consequence of this? Just like how the Bangalore lakes are concretized, are encroached by you know concrete structures, these lakes will get encroached by these invasive species which means this storage capacity is going to shrink and disappear. Uh, which has several consequences. One is urban flooding. These are all in the peri-urban area where Bangalore is developing. So where will the water go when it rains? It will come into your homes, it will come into you know, the roads, it will come into everywhere where it should not be. Second is, you're going to have massive urban runoff, which is the water will just rush into wherever it can, into the nearest stream, maybe after flooding the pathways, and just make its way to the sea. So if we cannot hold the water, catch the rain where it falls, how are we going to survive and how, how is the city going to actually cope with you know the climate change and the erratic rainfall so that's a question that we all need to ponder over the bengaluru urban district has more than 20000 acres in lake area this equals nearly 82000 olympic sized swimming pools almost 50% of this is now covered with invasive vegetation reducing the lake's storage capacity Restoring these lakes could be critical for Bengaluru's water security, potentially avoiding projects like the Meke Datu drinking water project. At Deccan Herald, we'd like you to be an active citizen. Do you think this is an ideal way to deal with encroachment? Send us solutions from your cities. Share and like this video for better reach. Subscribe to Deccan Herald's YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to receive notifications for more videos.